Hi Paul, so hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're going to have a little Bible study. So if you'd like to come before the Lord and uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your love today. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And we thank you for this day. And Father, I just pray what I share today, I just pray whatever I share, Father, it be a blessing and that, Father, you would use it to bless your people. Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit's help, and I just pray that you would use this word to help people, encourage people, and to lift them, and that they might know your love and grace today, Lord, in your name, and for your glory. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to turn to Psalm <coughs> 55. So, uh, Psalm 55. And uh, read these words. <clears throat> Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and I mourn because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they drop trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me, and the terror of death has fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror over overwhelm me, and I say all that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away, fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, Sela. I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and the tempest. Destroy, O Lord, divide their tongue, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls, and iniquity and trouble are within it. Ruins is in its mist and oppression and fraud. Do not depart from me from its marketplace. For it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with, with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend, we used to take sweet counsel together, and within God's We used to take sweet counsel together, within God's house we walked in the throng. Let death deal over them, let them go down to Sheol, a life for evil is in their dwelling place and in their heart. But I called to God, and the Lord saved me. Evening and morning at noon I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice, he redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage. For many are arrayed against me, and God will give here and humble them. He was enthroned from of old because they do not change and do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smooth as butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half the days, but I will trust in you. <clears throat> First of all, uh, the psalmist is in distress. Um, if you look at verse, uh, so the, we see the cry of the heart in verse 1. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Verse 3, because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me and in anger they bear a grudge against me verse 4 my heart is in anguish within me the terrors of death have fallen upon me and verse 6 and I say all oh, that I had wings of a dove I would fly away and be at rest so he's really really distressed and um, one writer said a prayer for God's help when uh, When treated by powerful conspiracy in Jerusalem, 
under the leadership of a former friend. In that cry, if we turn to Psalm 27 verse 9, Psalm 27 verse 9, we read these words, Hide not your face from me, turn your servant away in anger, for you have been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. So, in the midst of in the midst of his trouble, in the midst of his difficulty, the psalmist is seeking God in prayer. You know, is there anybody today who is causing you difficulty or any group of people? Then, are we praying about it? Are we praying to God about it? Very often we can react. Either we can go inside ourselves and get upset and depressed within ourselves, or we can strike out verbally, getting angry at people. The psalmist spent time with God and was praying about the situation. Maybe that's something that we need to do, or you need to do. Secondly, the betrayal of a friend. Psalm 55, verse 12 and 14. But it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolent with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together within God's house. We walked in the throng. So there, the psalmist is betrayed by a friend. There's nothing worse in life to be betrayed by someone you love. It is the most terrible experience that you can have, and especially if you're in ministry and you're serving God, and somebody turns on you you've respected. I, I think of the story of John MacArthur. And John MacArthur, he would spend a lot of time encouraging people, and he spent some time encouraging a young man, giving the young man books and helping this young man. And this young man took the encouragement and sometime later John MacArthur was invited to go to a conference and as he was going to the conference he saw this young man handing out leaflets and he goes up to the young man and he finds that the young man is handing out leaflets saying that John MacArthur is a heretic. How crushing can that be? Paul said all have forsaken me our Lord was abandoned and left to die on a cross. A man and woman of God needs to realize that God is there with them. And that people will let you down. People will fail you. People will not be what they should be. But if our confidence is in God and our trust is in God, then we'll not fall. We'll not be broken by it. I know that's very hard to say when you're in, an, in, in a relationship, it maybe you're in a marriage or a family situation and maybe it's a family member that has done something, said something that has broken your heart. But the key is where is our confidence? If our confidence is in the leadership of the church for example and that leadership falls, then we will fall. Uh, I know people who've looked up to leaders and there was a leader uh, about eight years, ten years ago, big evangelical leader, a rising star in the evangelical world, who suddenly spectacularly announced, uh, the, this person was married with kids, announced that he was running off with his researcher, which was, because he wrote books as well, which was a man. So he was married to a woman, but yet he was going out with another man and then said that he's leaving his wife and going with this man. And it completely rocked the evangelical world in the UK. Many evangelicals and pastors that I that, that I, I know looked up to this man, their faith was shaken. But our confidence is not in a man. Our confidence is in God. It's the same with your relationship with your marriage or, or anything else. If you put 
these things above God. If they go, you will fall. So the question is, about this sorry about this sorry about this Sorry about this, folks. I was just gonna, just a friend. Uh, Sorry about that. That was just a friend, a philosophy friend. <coughs> so where were we? I lost a piece of paper. Sorry about this. I lost the paper. sending me messages and it's just putting me off on what I'm doing. <laughs> e bye yeah lad. Just a little notice, have you seen that? That's really really cool that. Really really cool. I just read that. Darwin descent goes uh, for God. A direct descendant of Charles Darwin has become a Christian writer defending the faith. Dr. Laura Keynes, a great granddaughter of the English naturalist, has made a step after a period of agnosticism, belief of the, of the existence of God cannot be proved or disproved. Laura was judged a W.H. Smith Young Writer of the Year by Ted Hughes. She won a full scholarship to study at Oxford where she earned a Doctor of Philosophy. She now works as a critic and freelance writer in Cambridge and has reviewed for the Times Literary Supplement and The Observer. So no one can say she lacks the intellectual rigour of her forebearers, which includes not only Darwin, but also the economist John Maynard Keynes. How encouraging is that? Really good, that. I'm really, really encouraging. Now, where did I put that paper? Did anybody see where I put my Bible study? It's vanished. We have just witnessed a miracle. My Bible study that I had has just gone. But the miracle has been uncovered, and we have it right here. Here we are. Okay, um, let's turn to John 13.21. John 13.21. Sorry about that, it's just a friend of mine, he wants to set up a philosophy study group with uh, me and 
uh, Geek, you know, the, you know Geek on YouTube, and a philosophy friend who's a friend of his. Uh, so that's uh, John thirteen twenty one. Spent five five hours yesterday with his uh, hospital. And my uncle was in hospital for about three hours. He had a mild heart attack the other day, so I was in hospital uh, yesterday evening for about three hours. And then I visited an auntie in the hospital, and I was with her for about two hours. So I had a lot of hospital visiting yesterday. I'm quite tired out because. It's just five hours of talking. John thirteen twenty one. Um, after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looted one another uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples whom Jesus loved was reclining at table close to Jesus, so Simon Peter mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking, so that the disciple leaning back against Jesus said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, "What are you doing? Going to do? Do quickly." So, our Lord was betrayed. You know, he was betrayed by someone who was with him for three years. So, if it can happen to the Lord, it can happen to you. So, don't be down. Don't be discouraged if someone's let you down today. Then if you turn to uh, Psalm 55 verse 22, Psalm 55 verse 22, we read these words, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you, he will never permit the righteous to be moved. So cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will He will never permit the righteous to be moved. God will be with you in the midst of your problems. If you turn to Psalm eighteen thirty-five, Psalm eighteen thirty-five. You have given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand supported me, and your gentleness made me great. You have given me the shield of your salvation. 1 Peter 5, 7. One Peter five seven says cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So you can give your burdens today to God. Give your burdens to him. Let him carry your burdens. So those are three lessons we can learn today. Number one, if we're crying in our heart and we're we, we've got difficulties, we've got problems, and particularly if it's with individuals, let's pray. Let's pray about it. Secondly, not to be shocked if someone lets you down, and to have your confidence in God and not people. And thirdly, to remember that God will take care of you, that God will carry your burden. All right? I hope that's been a little blessing, just a little study there for you. So let's uh, close in prayer. 
I'll pray for you. You pray for me. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for your love and your grace and your blessings. And we thank you, Lord, that you are our God. And Lord, wherever we are today, whoever we come into contact with, those who might let us down, those who might oppose us, Father, we pray for them that they would come to know your love and care. And Father, we pray that you would open the way and bless for the, those who are listening today, that however difficult it might be, you would help them to deal with people. And Father, I pray if they've been let down, however hurtful it's been, I pray that you would comfort them and help them. And Father, I pray that they would put your burdens on you and that they would know your peace and joy. And so, Father, we ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. I hope that's been a blessing to you. And I'm going to close now. I might do another one in a minute. Okay. <laughs>